Good afternoon. I'm sorry about not attending the conference personally due to the outbreaking of coronavirus. The title of our paper is Efficient Can Search with Occupation in Large-Scale On-Demand Right Herring, and we are from the University of Queensland. I will follow this outline to introduce our work. First, let's go to the introduction. I guess most of you are quite familiar with the Uber and DD, which are well-known applications for right hiring service, offering us great convenience. When you have a request for a taxi, all you need to do is to input the destination you want to go in the app, and then the service system will assign you a taxi to take you there. From the service point of view, when there is a request coming to the system, the service will first locate several taxis nearby, and then assign one of them to the user based on a certain dispatching or scheduling strategy. The typical technical support for such operation is the KN query. Given a query location queue, a set of moving objects such as the taxis on the road network, and an integer cape, the KN query aims to find k nearest objects with respect to q, and the distance is measured by the row network distance. In general, we model the row network as a directly weighted graph, and here shows an example. As for the KN query on moving objects, there are plenty of related studies on it. The most straightforward solution to find KNNs on the row network is to apply the dice chart algorithm to expand the graph until we find the K nearest neighbors. There is no extra index, but the expand cost is huge. Road partitions the row network into multiple subgraphs and manages the subgraphs in a hierarchical way. During the exploration, it filters the subgraph that contains no object to reduce the search space. Gchi and Richi improve road uh, by adding some additional information of moving objects to accelerate the search. Torn employs the contraction hierarchy structure for the graph and preserves the neighbor objects on some specific nodes. During the exploration, the objects can be quickly obtained from the pre-store result. GLAD employs the grid index on moving objects, achieving fast update cost, and apply the H2H to hop labeling index on the road network. During the exploration, it first finds the K candidates by exploring the grid and then refine the answers by calculating the road network distance with the labeling index. However, in this paper, we are going to study the KN query from a different perspective. First, let's have a look at the limitations of the traditional KN query for taxi hiring service. Is there any problem with the efficiency? The system throughput of the aforementioned solutions can achieve from 1,000 to 1 million, which means that the system can process at least 1,000 query in one second. Thus, most solutions are efficient enough to support real-world query demand. In most of the time, the number of query coming to the system will not be larger than the system, system throughput. However, there could be not sufficient available taxes for new coming requests. For example, there are approximately 66,000 of taxes in Beijing city, and some of them are even not on surface. So during peak hours, the demand could be much larger than the support. In this case, the traditional KN query would either return some available results, those are very far away from the query location, or fail to respond the request. Thus, we often had the experience of long waiting time for the taxi request during peak hours. But what about considering the occupied taxis? Some of the occupied taxis might arrive their des destination soon, and if the destinations are happen to be close to some query location, then these objects should be considered as 
uh, the candidate objects to serve the corresponding request. Alternatively, we can also estimate the possible waiting time for the next available taxes by calculating the nearest approachable taxes. And uh, let me explain the details more concretely. First of all, we need to redefine the moving objects. We define the moving object to be a tuple consisting a current location, next destination, and the current status. The status can be occupied or non-occupied. And when a taxi is non-occupied, we set the destination to be the same as the current location. For example, in this picture, each object contains a current location and a destination location, indicating the, the end of the current chip. And after they finish the current chips, they will, they will be available for the new coming query request. Next, we define a new type of query named the approachable can query to consider the occupy object as the query result. Concretely, given the same input as the can query, the approachable can n finds k nearest objects regarding a specific distance measure. Uh, we compute the distance between the moving object to a query location as a combinational distance, uh, which is from the current location of the moving objects to, to the destination, and then from the destination to the query location. This means we consider the remaining chip of the occupied taxes. Uh, look at these pictures as an example. Given a query location in the middle, um, here, and when considering only the occupied object, the KNN will return 01, the yellow one as the nearest object to the query location. But in our problem, we can find 03, the green one, as the nearest approachable objects to Q. And in fact, the approachable KN query can return K earliest uh, objects that can arrive the query location. So during peak hours, even all the taxes are fully occupied, we can still find the approachable KN results and then try to estimate the possible waiting time for the query user based on such results. Next. I introduce the algorithm to answer the approachable KN query. Suppose that we apply the dice chart algorithm, the, the simple dice chart algorithm to address the approachable KN query. Then we will first explore the graph from the query location. And whenever we encounter uh, the destination of an object, we invoke another dice chart search exploring the graph from the destination of that object in order to calculate the combinational distance from uh, this object to the query location. And the algorithm will terminate after it finds k objects with the smallest combinational distance to the query location. However, this will be very time consuming since it might invoke a large number of dice, dice chart search on the graph. And we observe that the location of the moving objects are changing over time, but the row network is static. So we can pre-process the, pre the row network, uh, which means we can build a two-hop labeling index as the distance calculation black box. And then we only need to uh, apply one dice search to explore the graph from the query location. And whenever we encounter the destination of an object, we can calculate the combinational distance uh, with the help of the two hop labeling index. Next, we improve the algorithm by employing uh, the grid index on the moving objects. And we follow the same idea as GLAD. In particular, we locate the destinations of moving objects uh, to the grid self and explore the grid to find k, can, uh, k destinations of the candidate objects. And then we calculate the combinational distance uh, based on the two-hop labeling index as before. And then we continue and explore, conti continue the exploration and the refinement until all 
uh, k results are found. And different from the dice chart based algorithm, we will have to update the grid index frequently. And fortunately, the update cost is very slight, as discussed in GLAD. Um, next, let's look at the experiment result. We conduct, the, we conduct the experiments on the New York City road network, which includes around 264,000 of nodes and more than 700,000 of edges. And we also obtain a real dataset from the New York City Open Data, uh, which has uh, 18,000 of toxic trajectories and we map the starting point of each trajectory to the nearest vertex on the road network. And then the query location are half generated from the random starting points of the trajectories and half generated from the random vertex on the road network. And for the Occupy objects, we generate the destination uh, to be uh, the end point of the trajectories. And we mainly have uh, two sets of experiment. Firstly, we conduct the experiment to show the effectiveness of the destination oriented index. As mentioned before, we actually locate the destinations of the moving objects on the grid cells. Alternatively, we implement two other types of indexes, the object oriented and the hybrid ones. And uh, for the object oriented index, we map the moving objects to the grid cells based on their current locations. And then in this case, the index actually follows the same schema as the one in the GLAD. And then for the hybrid index, we duplicate the moving objects and then map each object on the grid cells twice based on both its current location and the destination. And from the results, we can see that uh, both the query and update costs are the best uh, in the destination arranged index. Next, uh, we compare the two proposed algorithms for answering the approachable KN query. Um, in different settings, we find that the grid-based index is way more efficient than the dice chart based solution. And uh, finally, we conclude our work as follows. Uh, we propose a new type of query that considers both uh, the Occupy and non-Occupy moving objects as candidates uh, for the KNN results. It differs from the existing KNN in the measure of the distance. Uh, from the moving objects to the query locations. And such query can find the next possible available taxes even the nearby taxes are all occupied. And alternatively, it can serve as a reference to estimate the possible waiting time for the query during peak hours. Accordingly, we introduce uh, a simple dice chart based algorithm and propose an improved uh, grid-based algorithm to address the, the approachable KN query. And this is the end of the presentation. In terms of the Q&A, I list two possible questions that might be interested by uh, the audience. The first one is about the space consumption and the pre-processing cost of the grid-based index. The major cost for uh, the pre-processing and the space actually come from the two-hop labeling index on the road network. And for the data that we use in the, in the experiment, uh, it, consumes 400, it consumes around 400 megabytes uh, with about uh, 86 seconds to build an index. So such cost is affordable. And the second question might be whether this solution could be adaptable to a dynamic or time-dependent road network. Um, the answer is unfortunately not, uh, at least not by now. This is because we need to pre-compute uh, pre uh, the two-hop labeling beforehand and then keep it as, an, as a black box for the distance calculation. But uh, we might consider the time-dependent road network as a future work.
At the end, I would like to thank the support from the Computing Research and Education Association, the CORE, for the Student Travel Award, and thank all of you for the listening.